So welcome to the first race vlog of 2023. I'm racing a 10K race tomorrow up in Norfolk and we've come to stay in this little log cabin here. Um, just on the outskirts of Norwich, we thought we would come up the night before, um, just so it's a little bit more comfortable for us. It's about a two hour drive. This is where we're staying. Let me give you a little bit of a room tour. And um, this is a little place we found on Airbnb, little like log cabin. Um, it's pretty cool in here. Shut the door to keep the warmth in. Got a little fire going, little log cabin. Meg's over there. Aww. You right? Yeah, it's nice. Isn't Cozy. It's cute, yeah. It's Been... warmed up now. Yeah, we've been here for about an hour now and had the fire going. Got my cup of tea there. I forgot about it, so it's um, it's just heating up a little bit. And yeah, this is where we're going to be staying for for this evening. And then we're about five miles, so about 10-15 minute drive from the race. Um, I'm going to be wearing these snazzy shoes tomorrow. Um, the Puma Deviate Elite 2. What do you think of those, Meg? Yeah, lovely. Lovely shoes, thanks to Pro Direct. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a sort of first impressions review towards the end of the video on those, the latest carbon racing shoe from Puma that are about to come out. What have we been up to today? Um, we went into Norwich, which is where we went to uni, so it was nice yeah. to go back. We were only there for a little bit, but we I booked a restaurant called Farmyard, which yeah. opened when we were at uni. I always used to walk past it, but obviously, Uni doesn't allow you to go to Michelin star. Apparently it's got a Michelin star, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. But it's got a good set menu, which isn't that expensive. Yeah, well, um, it's, still, it's still expensive, but yeah. compared to their usual menu, True. it was It was, it was like £29 for three course, which yeah. is, is good for a Michelin. Yeah, and it was, I put some photos here yeah, of the food. It was, it was pretty incredible. really good. And I just thought it was nice to treat ourselves because yeah, we don't do this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Valentine's. Well, this race actually is called the Norfolk uh, Valentine's 10K, so... Perfect. Yeah, very fitting. Just what I want to do for Valentine's Day. Come away and stand in the cold <laughs> and, and watch me race. Yeah. Got some fish and chips. It's a bit of a mission to find it, but um, <laughs> we've got it. Yeah, it's so dark, wasn't it? Yeah, we were just driving down country lanes <laughs> aimlessly for so long. Is this my one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a regular and a jumbo. <laughs> and it's tiny. Sorry. To be fair, I'm so full from earlier, yeah. I feel a bit sick. I thought that would be perfect. Time some grub. The next day. So it's the morning of the race. It's now 8.30 and the race is at 10 o'clock. Thanks, Meg. And um, yeah, so an hour and a half until the race starts. We're only about 10, 15 minute drive from race HQ. So that's always handy. I'm gonna get my number, just gonna go brush our teeth, meet Meg's parents, and then, uh, yeah, then race at 10 o'clock. Be interested to see how today goes, because I haven't really, um, well, I haven't tapered at all for it. It's just a little tune-up race before I head out to Osaka in a couple of weeks' time to race a marathon. Um, I always like to do something a little bit quicker to sort of get my legs ready to, so when I run at race pace for the marathon, it hopefully feels a bit more comfortable having raced considerably faster a few weeks before but um yeah lovely little stay over there i'll put a little link on um the youtube to the airbnb a um, lovely little place it was nice and warm in there we thought we might get a bit chilly because it is february but and we're it right, was freezing we? when we got there but yeah it's, it's really nice we actually were in, had to be in t-shirts for the majority of yeah. it because we made the place so hot but yeah just gonna go brush our teeth head to the start line <laughs> I don't want to say it, but conditions today are pretty much as close to perfect. It's about, about seven, eight degrees at the moment. There's no wind at all, no rain forecast, cloudy. So yeah, looks like it's going to be fast conditions. I remember when they did this last year, um, it was when we had one of those um, like storms come in from, I don't know, from America or somewhere. And it was yeah, super, super windy. So I can remember the first half of the race was literally just running straight into a headwind. And then it was lovely on the way back because we had the wind behind us. But um, yeah, today it'll be much better, much more favorable running conditions. So hopefully, got to go a little bit faster than I did last year. Last year, I ran 32.01 for this race, the Norfolk Valentine's 10K. Um, so I'm hoping to go a little bit quicker than that today. I've not done a lot of 10K speed stuff. Um, well, not at none at all really, mainly been focused on the marathon. So anything around that 31, 30 would be good for me. Um, anything under 30, over 32, I'll probably be a little bit um, disappointed with, but we'll see. Not really sure where the fitness is at, um, but we will find out today. All good, Meg? All good. Really Ready good. to go? Yeah. 
Bis dann. So I'm just out for a bit of a warm-up, just ran the first kilometre of the course and turned around heading back to race HQ. Forgotten how little lumpy and bumpy the, the start is. The first sort of kilometre, there's quite a lot of elevation gain and then it just levels out. So it'll be a bit of a slow start, then find rhythm after one or two k's and then yeah, nice downhill for the finish. So it'll be a good course. It's one of those courses where you've just got to race it, try not and worry too much about time or splits and yeah, just enjoy it. So just finished the race, out for a bit of a cool down. Um, I think the time was 32.06. So yeah, I can't lie, not an amazing performance. Legs felt pretty heavy today. Um, I'm coming off the back of a couple of hundred mile weeks now in marathon training. So yeah, just when, when it came to the point in the race to sort of push on um, and sort of go into that hurt locker, I just didn't really have it today um, in terms of mind state as, as well I just didn't feel like like making myself hurt too much today um, so when the guy in the lead Ruben got a bit of a gap on me at about 3k I sort of just let him go to be honest with you whereas if I was really in it my heart was really in it and I was feeling fresh I'd have probably been able to stick with him and, and push on but yeah he ran really well ran 30, 30 exactly 31 exactly um, for the win so good job mate um, and then at about 8k to go I got passed again by a guy who'd obviously paced it a little bit better than I had um, came past me at about 8k and I thought should I go with him I tried to go with him for a bit and then again legs just felt heavy and it just came to down, down to not really wanting to, to push on and race for second if I'm, if I'm totally honest um, but yeah it's a good, good training effort um, hopefully in two weeks time when I sort of settle down to marathon pace it'll feel a lot easier having done a hard 10k effort today but um, yeah I felt like I couldn't get out of sort of gear four today stuck in that sort of threshold zone um, but never mind would have liked to come away with a win but can't win them all um, and yeah the main goal is in two weeks time now so the taper begins today I'm gonna go out for breakfast now and get some fuel in. Um, I think we've got a nice little brunch place booked so that'll be nice. Spend the day with Meg's family have come down to watch so that'll be nice. But yeah I'd give that race probably about a 6-7 out of 10 in terms of performance for me today. But yeah just want to say a big thank you to the organizer uh, Seri and the volunteers. Really really well marshalled. Such a good one to do that's why I love to come and race this one. It's not necessarily a super fast course 
but there's a really nice community vibe here in in Norfolk and I'm always made to feel welcome so yeah thanks to all the volunteers and everyone who who cheered me on out on the course So to conclude this video, I just thought I'd quickly talk you through these two carbon racing shoes that I've been trying from Puma. They're both available now at Pro Direct Running and those guys sent them to me for the purpose of review. And there's some similarities. Both of them have carbon fiber plates. They both weigh 215 grams, so very lightweight in my UK size eight. And they have Puma's most responsive foam, the Nitro Elite. Um, which is yeah really really bouncy a nitrogen in, nitrogen infused midsole um, and yeah you can really feel it underfoot give you a nice energy return for me the main differences are the fast ass to, for me it feels more suited to the faster stuff um, so like 5k's and 10k's those faster reps on the track this shoe really comes into its own whereas the dv8 nitro elite 2 feels much more of a marathon shoe much more comfortable and more suited to those steadier efforts um, at sort of top end speed it doesn't feel quite as responsive as the fast start but when you're sort of settled into marathon pace this shoe offers you a bit more protection I would say than the fast R does so if you're looking to pick those up then please consider using the link in description a bit of an affiliate link which helps support the channel um, but yeah that's it for today's race vlog not quite the result I was hoping for but a good effort banked in the, the lead to Osaka which is in just two weeks time if you'd like to pick up some Team Varga hats um, they have kindly sent me some of their new collection um, and as always um, you can use Ben is running 15 for 15% off but until next time aspire to run run to inspire and we'll see you again soon bye bye